First of all, I would like to thank the organizing committee for inviting me to deliver this talk on uh, a very different topic, of course, uh, that is drug-induced liver injury. And uh, in today's presentation, we'll be discussing briefly about the uh, injury, how does it cause to liver, functions of liver in a brief classification of the drug-induced liver injury, mechanism and the risk factors, grading and severity. We'll also discuss about the signs and symptoms, of course, something about diagnosis and management, and also discuss something about vanishing bile duct syndrome as well, which is another entity on, of the drug-induced liver injury. So it's a bigger challenge. Why? Because it's often underlooked, but it's a very, very serious problem because drugs like acetaminophen, overdose, it can cause DLE, but there are other drugs and the biological agents which are responsible for causing acute liver failure and causing major clinical and regulatory challenge. So DLE is an uncommon but potentially lethal adverse drug reaction in population-based studies of different methodologies. The annual incidence is between 2.4 to 13.9, but it is uh, very common with certain drugs. Some life-saving drugs like cancer medications are used with caution despite of the risk of the cancer injury, the liver injury, because there are no therapy alternatives or because their benefits still outweighs the risk. DLE may also mimic any, any known type of liver disease, and there are several well-recognized phenotypes of that which, do, which are defined based on the clinical and pathological criteria. So <clears throat> let us see what the liver does in a brief. It serves as the body's chemical engineer and control center and regulates the various metabolism of internal compounds. And it also processes compounds from external sources like drugs. It is very adaptable and can regrow even if two-thirds resected, regenerates rapidly, and it's very, very important that enzyme and transporter functions can be altered with the help of liver function. So if you look at the liver physiological functions, it's been involved with formulation, secretion of bile, nutrient and vitamin metabolism, detoxification and activation of various substances, synthesis of plasma proteins, and of course, helping in the immune system by the help of Kupfer cells. It has got many assaults of different kinds. We all know it's one of the organs which really has been vulnerable, but uh, how it really adapts, it's another very, very exciting thing. It's been, uh, been assaulted by many insults like alcohol, drugs, various other environmental chemicals, uh, over-the-counter use of estaminophen, of course, diseases, hormones, cytokines, various kind of adulterants, proteins, bilirubins, dietary supplements, food additives, and even the herbal products these days, which are one of the main causes of causing liver injuries. And it has got its own responses in the form of cholestatic phase, the <coughs> hepatocellular injury, a mixed response, and can mimic any other known disease cause, and it can even regenerate. So if you uh, ask about drug-induced liver injury, liver may, injury may be produced by a large variety of the substances. Type of uh, degree of liver injury is extremely varied and may mimic entire spectrum of hepatobility disorder. Central role played by liver is clearance and biotransformation of chemical susceptible to drug liver induced injury. Drugs can initiate progressive chronic liver disease and are single leading cause of <coughs> acute liver failure. So going to the classification, it goes uh, in, and is divided basically into three parts, idiosyncratic, indirect, and intrinsic. The idiosyncratic is further divided into ty two types. It's, it can be allergic or non-allergic. Intrinsic is basically predictable in type of injuries which are linked to the toxic exposure levels of a drug or its metabolites, whereas idiosyncratic are rare and unexpected uh, given at the drug pharmacological action linked to yet poorly understood interplay of individual host susceptibility and other factors, whereas indirect is linked to an unwanted biological action of a drug on an individual patient. If you look at <coughs> the comparison between these three, indirect, direct, and idiosyncratic, the direct, that is intrinsic, is basically dose-related, whereas the other two are not dose-related. The latency period in a direct a liver injury is much shorter compared to the indirect or the idiosyncratic type. Rate of reoccurrence or occurrence is very, very high in direct injury compared to the indirect or the idiosyncratic type. It is predictable, whereas indirect and idiosyncratic are obviously not on most of the occasions. In the implicated drugs, which is very important to understand, in direct liver injuries like estaminophen, 
nicotinic acid, aspirin, cocaine, and many cancer chemotherapies, amiodarone, methotrexate, can be one of the causes. Indirect can be related to the very high dose of corticosteroids and anti neuroplastic agent, immune checkpoints inhibitors, protein kinase inhibitors, of course, some of the new monoclonal antibodies, idiosyncratic isoniazid, one of those drugs which have been commonly used, amoxicillin, clavulanic acid combination, macrolide antibiotics, fluoroquinolones, statins, and diclofenac, and certain herbal dietary supplements often are uh, linked to that. The various pathological mechanisms you see which are linked to the same are liver damage occur if the parent drug or the metabolite concentrations in liver cells exceed a toxic threshold in case of a direct liver injury, whereas as I already told you, indirect is unintended effect of a drug actions on the liver and idiosyncratic is adaptive immune response to a parent drug or the drug metabolite which may con contribute to the liver injury. So there are various mechanisms and risk factors if you discuss. In most of the instances, the mechanism, the risk factors are very poorly understood despite of the low instance. The main factors, although they which have been uh, postulated are one of the uh, thing is age. Age may be one of the risk factors for drug in induced liver injury. In uh, regarding with the specific drugs, as has been seen with nitrofluorantoin, isoniazid, and fluoxetine. On the other hand, uh, the children are uh, who are less than 10 years of age are, have increased risk of uh, dealing with the anti-epileptic drugs or the valproic acid. Talking about the gender, females and males appear to be have similar risk of dealing. However, females were found to have increased risk of developing liver injury from nitrofluorantoin, diclofenac fluoxetine and tetracycline. Ethnicity, of course, very little is known about the risk of DLE as far as the ethnicity is concerned, but uh, some of the studies group that they have been found that chronicity, and this is defined as elevated liver test for six months after the presentation of liver injury was more common in African and Americans rather than other races. Medical commodities and pre-existing liver disease, there's very little data to suggest association but uh, diabetes along with obesity has been one of the risk factors. Once you see methotrexate uh, induced liver injury uh, in uh, these kind of patients. So co-infections with HIV and CV has also been one of the major risk factors for hepatotoxicity of anti-tubercular drugs as well. So we must, must be very careful while prescribing that. So DLE can mimic all known forms of acute and chronic liver uh, diseases. A particular drug may be associated with more than single biochemical pattern of liver injury and there are different phenotypes of presentation once we talk about liver injuries. The form of liver toxicities can be very many. It can be in the form of zonal necrosis in which the liver injury is confined to a particular zone of the liver. Hepatitis where there is inflammation of the liver. Cholestasis, bile cannot flow from the liver to the duodenum because of which the cholestasis is there. Steatosis, building up of excessive fat within the liver, sometimes triggering the inflammation in the later stages. Granuloma, which is localized nodular inflammation. Vascular liver lesion due to uh, the, the drug-induced liver injury or the neoplasm. So these are the different clinical pathological phenotypes as I already discussed. They are of various types as I have uh, discussed. Acute hepatic necrosis, hepatitis, cholestatic and mixed hepatitis, hypersensitivity syndrome with liver involvement, different uh, severe cutaneous adverse reactions, drug-induced autoimmune hepatitis, and they have their own different kind of presentations every time. Hepatic steatosis, uh, that is sinusoidal obstruction syndrome, nodular regenerative hyperplasia, neoplasia, granulomatous hepatitis, acute fatty liver, Vanishing bind duct syndrome, which is another important entity which we'll be discussing separately, and pileosis hepatitis. So this is the cellular mechanism which has been actually linked behind causation of any liver injury. There, there are reactive metabolites which cause covalent binding and oxidative stress, which cause massive mitochondrial injury, intracellular stress, sensitization of tumor necrotic factor alpha, and altered re immune response as a result of haptin. In the end, it might result in different phenotypes or different forms of liver injury, maybe in the form of necrosis because of intracellular cells, even apoptosis due to the sensitization of tumor necrotic factor alpha as well, and similarly with altered immune response. So if you talk about the signs and symptoms, 
It may vary from yellowing of the skin and sclera, fatigue, anorexia, weight loss, nausea and vomiting with the patient might come up or passing with a dark or tea colored urine. So how will you proceed towards such kind of cases? We need to have a pre-planned LFT while evaluating a drug. Once drug is initiated, careful history taken has to be taken once you are suspecting a liver injury. Why? Because you are ruling out other etiologies and evaluate the type of liver injury. What kind of liver injury is it? If it is DELI, then you have to proceed towards the diagnosis of uh, DELI, whether it's a hepatocellular or mixed type or a cholestatic type. In case of cholestatic, careful monitoring is important and you have to discontinue the drug if you're suspecting it is related to a drug. In cholestatic type, the symptoms are related to liver such as jaundice and the total bilirubin is more than three times the upper limit of normal and PTI and values are more than 1.5 times. In case of a hepatocellular or a mixed type, the ALT levels are, the <coughs> are more than eight above the upper normal limit or five upper normal limit for more than two weeks and to total bilirubin and INR are sometimes often raised in, uh, in uh, association. So diagnosis. So the International Daily Working Group has suggested that any one of the following laboratory criteria of serum analytics are indicators of DLE once the other causes of liver injuries have been excluded. So the ALT equal to greater than five and ALT uh, than the up upper limit the ALT equal greater than three upper than upper limit or the total bilirubin value more than two times the upper limit, upper normal limit and no or minimal elevations in alkaline phosphatase level and alkaline phosphatase level equal to greater than two times the upper normal limit when the source of increased ALP is the liver. Of course, the <coughs> there are other studies of uh, DLE which are the post-marketing studies which have use different kinds of biochemical criteria to identify potential DLE causes. Again, they've been taking different kinds of tests like ALT and OST, which are uh, said to be significant if they are more than five times the upper limit of normal or ALP is more than two times the upper limit of normal on two consecutive occasion. Total bilirubin, which is elevated 2.5 times or INR, which is more than uh, 1.5 times along with the altered liver profile uh, as you just can see over here. So the grading of severity is another important factor. Once we go and managing the uh, drug-induced liver injury, it is important to grade the severity. Only then we can treat it. Various approaches have been uh, seen to assess the severity of the drug-induced liver injury. An ALT of more than eight and the upper limit normal or more than three and along with total bilirubin, hospitalization for the liver injury and death or liver transplants are categories which have been studied. There are various categories which are basically given by different kind of study groups. These are US induced liver injury network and international daily expert working group. They have categorized into five categories, mild, moderate, moderate to severe, severe and fatal. The mild ones are having only elevated ALT or ALP, but total bilirubin levels and the INR levels are less than 2.5 and 1.5. In the case of moderate, the elevated ALT and ALP are total bilirubin are elevated more than 2.5 and INR is more than 1.5. Moderate to severe having elevated ALT, ALP, total bilirubin and INR and hospitalization or ongoing hospitalization due to DLE. And of course, elevated ALT and ALP and the total bilirubin levels along with the hepatic failure and other organ failure due to DLE. Uh, which has been marked by ascites and encephalopathy are the form of severe liver injuries and fatal are the ones who are proceeding towards the death or candidates for liver transplantation due to the liver injury. So this is one of the law which has been uh, actually used in case of liver injury in order to diagnose it, which says that amongst those who are having enzyme elevation three times the upper limit limit, some with increased total bilirubin limit more than the two times upper limit limit with no cholestasis, so that is with or without normal alkaline phosphatase and no other reasons can be found to explain the com combination requires clini uh, clinical adjudication to determine probable cause of the liver dysfunction. So this is very important law which has been linked uh, to DLE. Clinical management of suspected DLE is actually foremost is the drug discontinuation. So automatically stopping drugs which is causing the liver injury 
So liver can adapt and become tolerant and close observation is warranted in most of the occasions. Preventing progression to the functional impairment is very important. You have to withdraw the drug if the ALT and ST levels are more than eight times the upper limit normal. If it is more than five times for more than two weeks, or if it is more than three times, and alongside there's a rise in the total bilirubin levels or INR signal coexistingly or whenever it is more than three times along with the symptomatic phase, you need to follow them, these, uh, these patients very closely until the enzymes return to the normal or the baseline and the symptoms enzymes may progress even after discontinuation and the re-challenge can be considered as well in certain cases but not for patients with significant rise enzymes and not for patients with accompanying signs of immunological reaction. So you need to be cautious in these categories of patients. You should not re-challenge. So gathering more information is another important point. Why? Because you have to rule out other causes which is causing the liver damage in the form of acute viral hepatitis, alcoholic and autoimmune hepatitis, biliary tract disorders, cardiovascular causes and other uncommon causes. So you have to also look at the drug and exposure of the dietary supplements occupational exposure to the toxic agents and of course remembering the highs law once you have uh, been really confirmed then you actually label it to be a drug induced liver injury vanishing bile duct syndrome is another important phenotype of the drug induced liver injury which is rare serious outcomes and complication of drug induced liver injury which is marked by clean clear very chronic cholestasis and histologically by loss of intrahepatic bile ducts it is typically occurring in the bout of severe cholestatic hepatitis often with immune allergic features and the, it's a complication of acute drug injury generally becoming manifested one to six months after the onset of injury. So the typical symptoms might be in the form of pruritis, fatigue, jaundice, sometimes with severe dyslipidemia, hypercholestemia, skin xanthomas that can be painful and interfere with the everyday activities, particularly when the present in palms and soles. There's persistent elevations in alkaline phosphatase levels and bilirubin, which is often occurring despite of the decrease in the serum, serum amino transferase levels with the normal or near normal range. Serum cholesterol levels are often raised in these patients and they have been linked to drugs like amoxicillin, clavulanic acids, penicillin, macrolide antibiotics, fluoroquinolones, sulfonamides, antifungal agents, non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, phenothiazines, TCAs and aromatic anticonvulsants. So persistent elevation of the alkaline phosphatase and bilirubin for more than six months after the onset of drug-induced liver injury is one of the diagnostic criteria. Absence of clinical or any serological evidence of primary biliary cholangitis, sclerosing cholangitis, and graft versus host disease, and liver biopsy is one of the gold standard in all these cases or because of you have to uh, look at whether there are any uh, vanishing small bile ducts in the sample taken at least one month after the onset of the injury. So it can slowly resolve on its own and ma major focus on our management should be avoidance of the further injury. We can use nutrition and vitamins and other mineral replacement in the form of ADEK and are important in the managing patients, uh, which is although a rare condition. Corticosteroids often used in severe form of cholic uh, cholestasis who are not responsive to the conventional treatments. These are my reference and uh, with this I would like to conclude.